we'll just chant um, 38, 39 and 40 आप मेरे पीछे जी जी दुख दुखे समे कृत्वा दुख दुखे समे कृत्वा लाभा लाभा जया जयाओ लाभा लाभा जया जयाओ ततो युद्धाय युज्यस्व ततो युद्धाय युज्यस्य नैवं पापम वापस्यसि नैवं पापम वापस्यसि सुख दुखे समे कृत्वा सुख दुखे समे कृत्वा लाभा लाभौ जया जयौ लाभा लाभौ जया जयौ ततो युद्धाय युज्यस्व ततो युद्धाय युज्यस्व नैवं पापम वाप्स्यसि नैवं पापम वाप्स्यसि एषा ते भीता सांखे एषा ते भीता सांखे बुद्धिर योगी त्विमाम श्रुनु बुद्धिर योगी त्विमाम श्रुनु बुद्धिया युक्तो यया पार्थ बुद्धिया युक्तो यया पार्थ नैवं पापम वाप्स्यसि नैवं पापम वाप्स्यसि नेहा भिक्रमना शोष्टी नेहा भिक्रमना शोष्टी नेहा भिक्रमना शोष्टी नेहा भिक्रमना शोष्टी प्रत्यवायो न विद्यते प्रत्यवायो न विद्यते स्वल्पम अप्यस्य धर्मस्य स्वल्पम अप्यस्य धर्मस्य त्रायते महतो भयात् त्रायते महतो भयात् वेरी गुड थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच So we are now seeing an important verse. All verses are important, as I say, of course, but then there are some verses which are directly significant. In the sense that they are conveying what needs to be conveyed what needs to be conveyed in terms of what is beneficial for a human being and what is it that is beneficial here, Tastra is telling us that when normally a person does karma, action, we all have the capacity to act. 
and it is inevitable that we are going to be using this faculty as often as is deemed necessary. In realms of action, karma, there are some very important points, aspects. For example, if you want an apple tree, where will you start the action from? Where do you start the action? From the seed, from the seed. From the seed? What about the seed? From the ground. From the ground. Excellent. You will first till the ground. And then? Find an actual seed. You will find the seed. Right. And then plow the ground. Plow the ground. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Sow the seed. Sorry? Water the seed. Water Look the after. seed. Look after the sapling. All this till the point to give manure, give fertilizer, etc. All of them are in a krama. Law of the farm, yes. All of them you see a krama. Krama means a sequence. Ye bahut badi ek fundamental siddhant ki baat hai even in a normal context of daily life i am calling it the success formula what is a success formula in the world we are not talking about shastra at the moment if anybody wants success in the world in their field of activity there is a sequence which needs to be procured in mind, which needs to be figured out. And then that sequence has to be followed. Uska anushthan, usko apply karna padta. That sequence has to follow one after another. If you change the sequence, what will be the outcome? Will vary according to the change you have brought in. For any karma, realm of karma, field of karma, karam se sambandhit, jaha karam ki baat hai, wherever action, and here karma and action I am taking as synonyms, not necessary vaidik karma, any karma, field of activity, where we act, where we perform, there you realize that who is really a successful, a big criteria to be successful in that field is that individual is disciplined in the sequence of karma that has to be followed. There is a niyam, there is a law, there is a pattern which needs to be followed. If our will our desire, Marzi Mary, starts operating in the sequence, then the chances are that the outcome will change. Like for example, obviously, if you uh, sow the seed first and then till the ground, what is the ratio of you having a successful apple tree? What is the chance of you getting an apple tree? You through the seed first and then you till the ground and then um, you didn't manure it at the right time and then you watered it occasionally, etc. What is the proportion? What is the chance of you getting a apple tree? Versus if you have followed the krama, 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 get the word in your mind. It's a krama. 
krama is integral to karma uska ang hai karam kabhi apne aap se ek nahi hota there's never just one action an action is a set of activities which are in a sequence towards a particular goal ideal a sequence of action set forth towards something that whole thing is called karma it's not one action and one action and one action and one action entire sequence from the procuring the land tilling the land getting the seed sowing the seed what etc etc <coughs> the entire process till you get the apple fruit the entire sequence which lasts what is the life cycle of an apple tree how many years anybody knows there it must be taking a few years i'm sure 5 7 years for an apple tree to grow i'm guessing the entire sequence of actions till you get the fruit of apple that entire thing is one karma it's a karma it has subsets it has a krama it has a discipline it has to have an effort persistent and consistent for a length of time till the fruit matures usko kehte hain krama abhi krama means following one after another very interesting you know in south indian when they make sambar there are two types in which people make one insist on putting tadka first and then put the with dal and the with the other insist on putting tadka at the end and both of them claim that the taste changes it is fascinating the first time i heard the word struck me abhi krama isme bhi the flavor will change in how you proceed putting your ingredients the flavor will change karma is directly the other side as we have always said the other side of that coin is the result karam or phal are two sides of a coin karam and phal are two sides of a coin for karm to give you a phal it has to have a abhikrama agar aap us abhikram ko nash kar do means you destroy the karma krama sorry you destroy the krama it's like saying i want to build a house and what do i start from i don't lay the foundation first i start building the best room that i want and then i say oh now i want a foundation krama nash ho gaya it's a very it's a it's a very i see it as a bahut gehri baat even in the field of activity why most people in the world are not successful they are not productive members of the society they are dependent members of the society why even in the world i'm talking because the discipline of karma is not abided in karm ka ek apna discipline hai discipline as in it has the krama and the person must have the knowledge of that krama which to be done when it is related to time your effort how much effort at what time and what kind of effort three all three how much effort what kind of effort and at what time that effort should be put in 
all the three are very essential to build the Krama cycle. <coughs> that is Abhi Kramaha. In the world, you find with most actions, people mess up this Krama. They are not aware of this Krama. They are not aware of that Krama. So what really happens? The Phal keeps changing. <coughs> the fruit keeps changing. Which means what I wanted, I may not get. This verse and the next verse are showing us the difference between Karma and when karma is done as yoga, the same karma done as yoga, what is the benefit of that? He had said, I will now tell you buddhi yoga in details. And in the first point of that buddhi yoga that he started telling, he says in this buddhi yoga, Unlike the karmas that you see in the world, where the karmas, karma, when you alter, the result alters. Here in Karam Yoga, Abhi Kramaha Nashaha Na Iha. There is no affectation of the krama. The sequence, there is no affectation of it in Karam Yoga, which means there is no way that your effort will not produce the desired result. What is the desired result of Karam Yoga? What is the result of Karam Yoga? Directly speaking, Chitta Shuddhi. <coughs> Everything that comes along with it. Everything as in whatever you desire, if you do it with a little sakamata, also gets fulfilled. So, in Karam Yoga, Iha, here, Buddhi Yoga. Why Buddhi Yoga? Because your Buddhi needs to be discerning the attitudinal differences. Apne bhaav mein kya badalna hai, apne outlook mein kya badalna hai, apne nazariye se kya badalna hai, apni drishti mein kya badalna hai. All that he said in the above paragraph, Shankara said is, a karma done with Ishwar Arpan and Prasad Buddhi, here in this, there is no difference with Pramaha. Uska nash agar ho bhi gya means I did start with Sakamata but later on I made it a little Nishkam and then again Sakamata I percolated into my action. Prama badal gya na? Interfered. No problem. That Sakama Karma and its affectation with reference to the result may have at that level. But the Nishkama Karma that you did, that will retain itself. Whatever you do, however much you do, in normal world, normal action from the tilling of the ground to the apple tree, what is the degree of karma that one has to put in? Kitna. There is a lot of effort. Even the worldly knowledge, if you have to become a doctor, you have to become a soldier, you have to become a chartered accountant, you become a, how many years of effort do you put in? 
to get that degree and then a job etc karam ka swabhav hai that it has to have a nishchit amount of effort put in if that much effort is not put in the karma phal will change but here in karam yoga swalpam api asya whatever be the krama in that even a little effort put be assured that there is no pratyavaya there is no akarane pratyavaya dosh akarane pratyavaya na karne ka jo dosh aata hai wo nahi hoga plus there will be freedom mahato bhayat freedom from this fear <coughs> great fear fear of the outcome fear of a loss jaya ajaya lab hani etc janma mrityu uncertainties as i said yesterday fear seems to be very integral part of human experience of not human every experience living experience what really is the basis of fear where does it come from the fact that i fear the loss paramarthically speaking the loss of my existence when i fear that i'll disappear that knowledge not being there agyan ka ek dar hai dar bithata hai agyan dar bithata hai that fear remains throughout expresses off and on he says here o parth o arjun the three great advantages unlike karma so for one's own consolidation of the knowledge you have karma yoga and its advantages on right side you have karma and just the opposite of it on the left side karma would mean abhi krama has to be there otherwise the result will not come karm yog means you don't have to worry about the abhi krama there is no abhi krama there dedication to your of your karma to your ishwara to ishwara or to higher ideal or to your kartavya buddhi the least operating from the kartavya buddhi operating from kartavya buddhi that itself is directly giving the result there is no nasha in between it's certain that there will be phal phal ka nash nahi hoga pratyavaya na vidyate means supposing you were supposed to do a certain obligatory action in the world and you didn't do definitely not doing will give you some result your normally speaking nitya naimittika karmas are the ones that when you do not do a karane it gives you pratyavaya but regular world karma you were supposed to say um, if you are a working person you were supposed to go and uh, work somewhere etc etc but you go on taking leave after leave after leave what happens pratyavaya you are getting a dosha there because you are not doing what you are supposed to do what happens in karma yoga there will be no loss there will be no affectation of it at all little done the three are very very significant even a little done means you don't have to do a lot of effort it's such a great relief to people who follow these principles in life the first thing that relaxes completely a person is when you realize that it has freed you from the cyclical urgency of maintaining a karma what does karma yoga do it frees you from that bondage because it says swalpam api asya 
your chittam relaxes from inside. Because it's not necessary that you have to, have to go on beating yourself to do something. If I don't do it, I'm out. It's like a daily wager. If he doesn't work for the day, he doesn't get his bread. Karam yoga means now, little, you know, in the ninth chapter, I think it is, where Krishna will say, <coughs> if you offer even pushpam, toyam, halam, one fruit, a lot of times people ask, how many mantras, how much japa, how much parikrama, how much tapasya, how much should I do? Very recently it is like, should I light <coughs> one wick lamp, one wick, two wicks, three wicks, five, odd number, even number. Someone asked me, should I do an odd number or an even number? But I didn't even know it. Odd number and even number should make a difference because what makes a difference to Bhagwan would be, to your devotion would be, not the number of wicks. Dvalpamapi. If there is a devotion there, with that devotion, even if you do a little, that also is pal dene wala. Should I only do 1008 and then I will get fall? Little done also, you get the fall. What happens in karma? A little done may not give you the fall. What about a little done? Supposing I said I studied up to, up to a master's degree or a bachelor's degree and then I wanted to teach but I didn't do my B.E. Will you get your result? No. Means, for you to get any result in the world, there are a certain principles, certain procedures, certain tamas that you follow. In Karam Yoga, he said, little, little, the, the emphasis is on swalpam, swalpam. Swalp, it should remove all doubts from one's mind. Little done also will give you the result. And that's a great relief to a person because people say, Ham janma janmantar se, we have been in bondage. How much should I go on doing and how, how long will it take, etc, etc. There is no need to worry. Swalpam api. That should be enough to gain the halam because what is the bhayat tankara says samsara bhayat the samsara has fear it is it its characteristic is fear in the form of janma marana adi lakshana so giving us the beginning of buddhi yoga now he started. What is Buddhi Yoga? Sankhya Yoga, I have finished giving. I have said in details what is Atma, what is Brahma Gyan, and why, O oh Arjuna, you should abide in Swadharma, know your Swadharma, what is natural to you, act on your Swadharma, keep yourself in that, and then now, he says, I am going to be telling you in a little details. Listen to what is that Buddhi Yoga and these three are the very principles of Buddhi Yoga. The gains of Falashruti. It is first telling us what is Buddhi Yoga. What is the gain of abiding in it? And then in the 41st verse, he is giving us another difference and that is a important difference also because for a one who has decided, nishchay kar liya, ki I am going to convert karmas into karm yoga. Wo nishchay, Bhagwan says here, wo ek buddhi hai. Ek buddhi means that nishchayatmika buddhi hai ye. It is now 
determined. It is now discerned. And it is in one direction. It will be gathered. It will be something that is going to be constantly moving towards one goal, preventing all other distractions, deviations, etc. Vyavasaya Atmika Buddhihi Eka Iha O Kuru Nandana O Joy giver of the Kurus to the Kuru clans, Kuru Nandana, child of the Kurus, giving joy to the Kurus. O Arjuna, Iha, here, in Buddhi Yoga, there is only one Vyavasayatmika. In the Bhashyam, he says, Nishchaya Swabhava. Uska Swabhav hai wo Nishchayatmik hoti hai. Eka, Eva, Buddhi hi. There is only one Buddhi here. But, if you don't have karma yoga in your vision and you're only abiding in karmas, then what? Bahu shakaha. There are many branches. anantaha cha. And endless they are. There are many branches and endlessly there. Buddhi Avyavasainam. For those who have not taken to the mark of karma yoga, means in realm of karma. And this we all know also. In the realm of karma, what is it that we are engaged in? What is what are the choices one has in the realm of karma? Endless, limitless, bahushakha. And each shakha, anantaha, mark and mark and mark. Few years ago, there were very few professions. And then professions started multiplying. And then within the professions, there were more branches that are coming out. And now, those that you thought were now fairly limiting, the next generation has such new terms within your own profession. That you wonder, oh, there is now another branch that has come out of pursuit. Anantaha, which means for those whose nishchaya is not made for spiritual growth. Aapka nishchaya nahi hai. Means you don't have a goal, you don't have a vision. Adhyatmik gati is not in your plan of life. It's not an agenda of life. My Adhyatmik Gati is not an agenda of life. If that is so, how will you live life? It's a very subtle point. Here, there, everywhere. Artha, Kama, even Dharma. Dharma narrows it. But Artha and Kama, the pursuits of it, makes the mind restless. Bahu shakha hai inke avenues. There are many fields in which the minds will have to be engaged and kept engaged in. When your interest is Artha and Kama alone, Dharma narrows it, but is still Bahushaka. Only place where you can bring the scattering of your mind together. Nishchayatmika. There are not many directions here. There is only one way to live. There is only one way in which you can abide in it. It's a very important point. Ek hi rasta hai yaha. There is only one method of abiding. 
if you say i want adhyatmic gati i want growth i want freedom from my desires and the havoc they play in my mind excuse me if you say i want more peace integral or i want more knowledge i want to be connected to my own source of harmony and peace whatever words you may choose if that is your goal bhagwan says here iska ek one direction it's unidirectional there are not many ways there are not many ways in which you can say i can grow spiritually yeah if you say i can do this marg and that marg and this religion and that religion they are also anant shakha ha there is only one way in which sankhya yog is your goal for which buddhi yog is the method ek hi rasta hai ye what is sankhya yog sankhya yog is atma vidya brahma vidya atma anatma viveka and that's very sukshma very subtle as i said yesterday most of us after knowing it also what is the topic of thought in our mind naturally what thoughts come to our mind after having heard atma is nityam shuddham uh, nirakaram etc does the mind automatically discern on them no there is this unknownness left in the mind nahi samajh mein aaya nahi pata chal raha there is this i can't figure it out it gets a postponed knowledge i may understand tomorrow but it becomes a matter of words knowing it i know the words but i cannot abide in them i am not able to find the anchor in them then what was the method he said bring yourself to the qualifying ground qualify yourself what is the method of qualifying that method to qualify <coughs> he said is start karm yog what is the advantage of karm yog he says this will now narrow down bahu shaakha ye interest us sab jagah phailte hai na hamare ye bhi kar lo wo bhi kar lo yahan bhi jaao wahan bhi jaao aisa bhi ho jaye waisa bhi ho jaye our desires bring us to the realm of their experiences in multiple ways and therefore sukh and dukh comes from many ways because bahu shaakha yes but what happens when the goal is set i'm qualifying eka buddhi there is only one buddhi that i need what is that buddhi this buddhi which is buddhi yoga which is my karma before they are to before they are set tama sukha dukhe i set my buddhi i fine tune it i readjust my thoughts i readjust my outlook i readjust my vision what do i make it sama sukha dukhe jaya ajaya lab alab this is buddhi yog making it before i start the action making it sama then after that he said engage in your swadharmic activity and whatever the fruit of it be says that is a part of your own the seat of hal and it has to be has to be what it has to be what it will be uh, it will give you chit chitti eventually it will give you chit shuddhi and therefore it has to be 
Pratyavaya, it doesn't have. What else? Nashaha, it doesn't have. Fear, it destroys. So it has to be conducive. It will be conducive. Conducive. It will be towards your Shreyas. What did Arjun want to know? What should I do that will bring me to my Shreyas? Kya hai karke jo Shreyas milega? So he had said, Shreyas will not come by, as Arjuna thought, by avoiding karma. Shreyas will come by abiding eka buddhi. By performing your swadharmic karma, nishchayatmika buddhi. Have no wavering in it. Have no doubt in it. Do not wonder if it works or not. It works. That eka buddhi. For those who are following the path, Sankhya Yoga, you come to because of Buddhi Yoga, Karam Yoga. This is one rasta, one marg. Starting from Karam Yoga qualifies you to Sankhya Yoga. And there are not many ways in which you can change it. You can alter it. You can hope something else comes from it. So, Bahu Shakha hi Ananta Hacha Buddhi Avyavasaina. For those who are not determined, who are not got, Bhagavan Bhashyakar says, Pramana Janata Viveka Buddhi Rahitana. Those who do not have Pramana Janat Viveka Buddhi. Exposure to Pramanam Shastra Vidya. Usse jo vivek buddhi utpan hui hai. You discover yourself with the capacity to understand the subtle things. Praman hai. Those are the ones who will run in the world for all things that are based only on karma, thinking they are the karta. And by doing those actions, I will get those results. They are the ones who will act like that. But who are the ones who are Vyavasayatmika? They are the ones who are Pramana Janita Viveka Buddhi Nimitta Tvat. How has their mind become single pointed, focused? How have they become determined? How have they become purposeful to get what is the Shreyas leading them to Shreyas because there is a Pramana Janata Viveka Buddhi. Vipreet to that is Vipreet to that is Bahushakha Ananta Hacha and then he says all those who believe in these Ananta Marks and which includes all kinds of spiritual pursuits also other than what Shastra Praman is telling us. Chitta Shuddhi leading to Chitta Gyanam, uh, Buddhi Gyanam, Atma Gyanam. Other than that, all kinds of things, people will say flowery words. Ya Imam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadanti Avipaschitaha Avipaschitaha those who are not viveki, those who do not have buddhi, avivekinaha, alpamedha saha, Shankara says, alpamedha saha means very little medha they have. What? Kam sochte hai. Sochit sochte nahi hai. Jo nahi sochte, what will they do? They will offer you many, many flowery words on the path of other pursuits. Like for example, you do so much and you will get that. And you will, you know, so they will offer all kinds of uh, 
Dobhamanam, the ones that you like to hear. Promise you the fruits that you like to hear. You do this much and you get that, etc., etc. These are all people who do not know. And therefore, those who proclaim ye karlo or ye ho jayega, etc., etc., these are all pushpitam vacham. Even the realms of karma kand here, Bhagavan says, is all ya mimam pushpitam vacham. Pravadanti, entering it, avipaschitaha. They, they speak of it, not knowing. But those who know, Opat Veda Vadarataha. They revel in this knowledge that the Vedas are actually implying, they lead you to. Na Anyat Asti Iti Vadinaha. They say there is no other way. Na Anyat Asti Iti. Or Kui Rasta Nahi hai. There is no other mark. So, what is that? He's concluding, he's confirming in a way, either you are qualified to do Vivek Gyan, means Atma Natma Viveka. Either you are qualified, how do you know? By natural pravritti, your mind is reflective. If your mind is reflective, you have gone through the stage of Karam Yoga, preceding it. Already hai, you've become an adhikari. So you find that when you're in leisure by yourself, satya mithya ka anveshan, thinking, is natural. You're constantly delving into figuring out the source of your being. But if you find your thoughts are running towards the world, desire fulfillment, or hoping for happiness from the world or wanting some achievements from the world, etc., etc. If that is what is your focus, attraction, the thoughts are going there and they get carried away by, you know, every few years you have these purva pakshas that grow in the society. Within 20, 25 years, only five, six have grown. They come and they go. But when they come in the grip of the society, the whole society seems to be saying, ah, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Vedanta kind of becomes in the background. And then very soon it filters away. And once again, you realize, oh, oh you know, it was just like another one. And however much you may bring to mind's attention, if it is not based on eternal principles, it cannot be eternal. What is based on eternal principles has to be from the Vedas. There is a Siddhant of Karma or there is a Siddhant of Jnanam. These are two as of seeming paths, but it is only one Nishchaya. There seem two paths means Karam ka margalak dikta hai. Yan Kamarg Alag Dikta Hai, but those are the ones who do not know. So they talk of many, many ways in which they can attract your attention and engage you in the realm of karma. You do this and you will, etc., etc. Veda Vada Rataha Partha Na Anyat Asti Iti Vadinaha. Na Anyat means. Uh, There is no other way. And then he says, Kamat manaha swarga paraha. Janma karma phala pradam. Kriya vishesha bahulam. Hogaishwarya gatim prati. These people who talk of all these bahushakhas, karma and their phal, for the fulfillment of your desires, 
desire ridden, they'll offer you swarga paraha. Swargam as your purusharth means whole life you will spend doing a particular kind of karma to get a particular kind of a place in heaven, etc. That will be the end result. Janma karma phala pradam. This is what is going to be your fulfillment of your janma. Do these karmas and that will fulfill your life. Kriya vishesha bahulam. There are many, many, many actions which lead to bhoga, aishwarya. They'll take you towards bhoga and aishwarya. Gatim prati. Kriya vishesha bahulam bhogaishwarya gatim prati. So, they speak of many, many words, give you many paths, give you many rituals, even vaitik karmas. So, there is laukik karmas, they give you, offer you lots in the world, status and everything. I don't need to elaborate. Vaitik karmas offers you swarga, etc. But very, very single road, one path. Between this karma and phala ka attraction, there is one nishchaya atmika buddhi. O Arjuna, if you are able to perform your karma in your swadharmic field with your kartavya nishtha, this is only one way. It's like how you take out the thread from an eye of a needle. Bahad sari jagao se nikal sakte ho kya? Taking out a thread from the eye of the needle. Are there many places from where you can take it out? There's only one eye of the needle. There is only one way in which your spiritual freedom comes. That is whatever paristhiti be in your life, whatever situation be in your life, if you can bring your mind nishchay karke, kartavya buddhi pe, not based on ragadvesh, not based on ahankar, not based on ichcha, not based on people's opinions, etc., etc., that is bahusha khaha. Your mind and its springboards can be bahusha khaha. But if you can remove all of that and keep it abided, my kartavya, that alone should be the springboard of my karma. If your springboard of karma, excuse me, is any of the other means, then it is bahusha khaha. They keep you in the realm of samsara gati. They'll take you places and places and Experiences and experiences, sukha, dukha will be eventually, one will roll into the other. So, these people will give you, these people as in those who talk about karma as an attractive realm in itself, basically this is branch of darshana which is mimamsas. Mimamsakas, karma mimamsakas, they analyze the field of karmkan. They are the ones here who are primarily mentioned when they try and keep you in the realm of karma. So, if you are sticking to that, he says there will be many, many ways in which you can do karma. But I'm repeating myself now. There is only one way in which you can approach the Shastram for your sake, for your growth, and that is in any parasthiti, in any way, stick to doing what is to be done. Nishchayatmika eka buddhi. What is to be done is eka buddhi in the realm of your swadharma, and that is what is desired for your growth.
he says for those now in this verse 44th verse he says vogaishvarya prasakta nam taya aparat chetasam vyavasayatmika buddhihi samadhau na vidhiyate for those who are engaged in bhoga aishvarya who perform their karma for the sake of bhoga and aishvarya means for the sake of some laukik worldly gain iha gain iha gain means here some fruit here taya for them their aparat chetasam their minds are going to be robbed away they'll get distracted they'll not remain focused they will not achieve the shreyas therefore what will happen is there will be absolutely navidhiyate samadhau navidhiyate such a mind will remain scattered distracted and will not be able to come to samadhi here samadhi means ekagra the ekagrata that is required for atma and atma viveka vyavasaya atmika buddhi hi na vidhiyate your buddhi will not be able to become vyavasaya nishchayatmika the sukshmata that is required of the buddhi will not come why because man bhag raha hai na sab jagah so your mind is robbed away ru ru means kheecha gaya hai kheech le jata hai like we said indriya vishay indriyon ko kheech leta hai so man uske sath khich jata hai so the mind remains engaged in external world and external activity therefore you never become the adhikari for shreyas samadhau na vidhiyate such ones अंतकरणम समाधि अंतकरणम बुद्धि तस्मिन समाधौ न विधीयते न भवति इति अर्थः मींस योर विवेक बुद्धि संकरा सेस अपरत चेत सम आच्छादित विवेक प्रज्ञानाम एज इफ कवर्स इट लेट मी सिंपलीफाई दिस आपकी इच्छाएं आपके मन का क्या करती हैं योर डिजायर्स हैव व्हाट इफेक्ट ऑन योर माइंड कंट्रोलिंग भटका देती है भटका देती है व्हाट एवर यू मे बी डूइंग दे विल मूव यू अवे फ्रॉम इट दे विल पुल यू अवे फ्रॉम इट भटका देती हैं जी what did you say neetu ji controlling effect they will control your absolutely control your mind yes what are you saying you just want more and more desires you will excellent all of you your will, the desires will multiply you will just want more and more and look at the waves in your mind man aapka kaisa rehta hai chanchal rehta hai भागता रहता है कभी तृप्त नहीं हुआ कभी कंटेंट नहीं हुआ यस एक्सट्रोवर्जन बेगिंग फॉर सुखम करेक्ट इट विल रिमेन एंगेज इन बाहर की चीजें बाहर एवरीथिंग एक्सेट्रा तो ही सेज ओ अर्जुना नाउ कंक्लूडिंग इट हियर टू सम एक्सटेंट या नेक्स्ट वर्स वी विल टेक अप नेक्स्ट टाइम बिकॉज नाउ ही इज गोइंग टू स्पीक अ लिटल मॉर्ट up to here is one topic again what is the topic he says buddhi yoga imam shruno he gave us the three fruits of it in buddhi yoga there is no waste there is not no loss aapka apahit ho hi nahi sakta means it can never harm you it will never be detrimental to you karam ke realm mein there is no certainty of result there is nothing that you know cannot be harmful to you etc etc but buddhi yog will always be to your advantage then he showed us what happens to those who have
scattered their interests into too many areas who have not resolved to follow buddhi yoga unka man ki sthiti kya hogi they will be attracted by the slightest of fall there is someone who will say aap guru ji ka darshan kar lo je bas usi se kaam ho jayega there is someone who will say ki aap there are many things in the world too many to count each one will pull your mind maybe 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 as much your mind gets attracted to it and gets pulled off so much you are distracted from distracted in the sense so much you're pulled away from what really is stress for you that he says is not going to give you samadhi means it will not prepare you for your atma vidya it there's no way you can be resolute and your mind will always <clears throat> be running after things isn't there a difference between sukham and being sukhi being sukhi sukham these are different words of different states karma versus karma yoga is not indicative of sukham and being sukhi sukham and being sukhi can only come really from karma yoga karma can neither give you sukham nor make you sukhi karma keeps you in the realm of bondage keeps you in the realm of cycle it gives you some temporary relief karmas and the fruits so i think we've covered many verses today if there are any questions other than that we'll take it up our next verse we'll take up next time because he is going to elaborate a little more in the same buddhi yoga context uh, these are just words uh, there no necessity to break things into all these kinds they're just again intellectual appeasements sukham denotes an external achievement sukham is your nature they don't sukham is not coming from external achievement whenever you have any sukham experience it's an expression of your own inner to keep so bhav that you are which is expressed in fulfillment of a desire so these are intellectual appeasements vyartha vichar there are some no. vichar which is vyartha this kind of a vichar is vyartha because there's an intellectual pursuit which tends to as if give us happiness ha ah. gymnastics correct intellectual gymnastics there is no prayojan of such vichar so you should be very watchful of your conditioned um, way of learning because if you are involved at an intellectual level then you will have questions only for intellectual appeasements and they have no prayojan here bhagwan is telling us straight away that even pursuits that otherwise seem to be giving us a lot of pleasure have no prayojan except for karma done as karm yoga then where are we talking about anything yes the view uh, aren't we also scattered jiji ji i mean would you not describe the state as our state as well i mean maybe at different levels i am not uh, generalizing maybe you know some people may be at a higher level than we are but aren't we also similar to what you absolutely. described absolutely absolutely that is why geeta has come by default we are all scattered you are not going to find yourself unscattered unless until karma yoga has come into your life that is a state only of the one who is a karmayogi 
Otherwise, we are all scattered. We are all bogies. We are all, like you said, different in in degrees, maybe a little more or a little less. But the steadiness of the mind, the stability of the mind, that he said, that he said, stability of that is not going to be till your mind has matured by giving up the attachments towards the results that it holds very dear in avidya, which only karam yoga can help us. So by default, we are all scattered. That's why the knowledge is essential for self-growth. That's the way it, it's telling us the formula for self-growth. But I think Lord Krishna very cleverly has brought it down to Karam Yoga because that I find is more tangible right. than, uh, than Buddhi Yoga. I mean, that still feels very subtle, very difficult to relate to. But uh, I think uh, Karam Yoga is more tangible. So the starting step, I feel he's brought it down so beautifully to this. Absolutely. And uh, just a little correction, Buddhi Yoga is Karam Yoga. In this context, and, okay. Sankhya and Yoga San is Gyan Yoga. Okay, so I find that like, you know, very, very subtle and... Um, it It is, that's why, see, why to is Gita being, why is Gita popular? Why is Gita being a subject relevant to everyone? None of us would be ready for the Upanishadic Gyan. If we have not been prepared through this Gyan, Oh, Gita, yeah. Right. Atma and Atma so, Vichar is last stage. Hmm. Usko, just because we hear it, many people think that now I should understand it, I should know it. Sun ke bhi jo nahi samaj mein aya is a clear indication that I lack adhikaritva, means I need to get more adhikaritva. Which means Karam Yoga is my starting point. There is nothing lower than this to start. Eka Eva Buddhihi. There is only one way to start Adhyatmic Gati. Yeah, but it doesn't days. feel it doesn't feel so difficult. I just felt Ex that. Like this is exactly. tangible. It yeah. is. That is why he has and in fact what he has done is what Karam Khand would do through rituals, he has brought it in the Gita as Karam Yoga. So, because this can be applied in any action. Very, very true. And you can get steadiness through it. And Swalpam, this is a guarantee. Many, many people have evolved. He's going to tell in the fourth chapter. Oh, Arjuna, ye, I am not saying this and you are not, we are not just handful of people. Every generation, many, many people use this knowledge and evolve themselves. They apply this and they grow. That's the way it is. Yes, Karam Yoga is the starting. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, the, if you like, suppose for Gita as well, right? If they if they said to you that you know, if you chant this much, you will get this fruit. If you do this, you will get this, right? So, is it just for us to start somewhere? Is this like a beginning point to give you or to motivate you or? Yeah, good question. You know, when they say that finding the right devotion in oneself. To be able to say even one is enough, you need the practice of that many number of times. All of us are not going to be able to say my one action is very devoted enough that it will reach, it will connect me to Ishwara straight away. When I offer a flower, one flower, just because Gita said one flower, Am I Chitta Shuddha enough, Ekagra enough? Am I connected to Bhagwan enough with Shraddha? Is my Shraddha invoked enough? Has it grown enough? Is it developed enough? 
that I can do even one and I know it has reached. You know, sometimes some people are just so, uh, I don't have the right example at this point, but, um, okay, let me say a mother and say a newborn child, maybe, or their child. Even a small cry from the child wakes the mother up. Why? And supposing you have a helper or somebody else, some neighbor or a friend visiting, will they respond to the same thing in the same way? What is the difference? The mother's mind is ekagra. Mother's mind is ekagra. Exactly. Is, has got enough thought flow connecting it to the child. Now, when they say do thousand times, you know, like Vishnu Sastranama, one thousand eight, etc., because it will help you to come to the point that even once if I do, it will reach Bhagwan. You know that it will come. You've connected it. You know it's received. A flower doesn't have to fall. You know your prayer is received. When? Because your devotion is known to you. But will it come without abhyas? When our minds are scattered in the world, in the realm of desires, this is why they say, do so many times and it will give you that fall. Is only to say, every time, maybe this much will evolve in you. Maybe this much more will grow in you. And that much will be needed. Maybe it's like a experiential thing that average buddhi, jad buddhi, that we all are. We need that much repetition for it. You know, it's like patthar ko itna ghisna padta hai before it becomes a pebble. But once it's become a pebble, even one stream of water will flow on it. It's smooth now. So how much is your manas mind taped to, to be connected to the totality? Karam Yoga helps. And for you to connect to Karam Yoga, all those prayers and rituals, it's like, you know, number of times, therefore you will evolve. At some point, you know. Supposing you need so many flowers to offer to Bhagwan on your puja. Supposing. One day, after having done many times, one day when you see a bunch of tamali growing through it, and that bunch is bright, and suddenly the thought comes, Ishvara is in this creation, manifest. I don't have to pluck it. This Ishwar, this flower here from this tree is already being offered. I don't have to pluck it and put it there. Do you get the spirit, what I'm saying? Yes, Deepu. How will that come? If it's already felt, I don't need all that. Means I have already come enough to understand my connection with Ishwara is now established. Now if I give even one fruit, one flower, it is going to be received. But many of us, that one flower Correct. Sudama is bhakti towards Lord Krishna. Excellent example. Sudama is bhakti towards Lord Krishna. Bhakti as in, there is this, what would you mean by having a flow of thought towards the higher? Apne aap se agar ja raha hai to, there is no problem. You have already crossed it. But for most of us, our minds are definitely needing a lot more head out. That's why Gita becomes, knowledge becomes relevant. 
it brings you to the point of knowing what to live with. So that slowly the mind shapes itself, trains itself for it to be recognizing the higher, qualifying yourself to receive. Any other question? What do you have? Otherwise, we end early today. Karma yoga and buddhi yoga is the same. Yeah. In, in this context, in fact, it's interesting why he will say it. Because for karma yoga to apply, you need buddhi. In karma, do you need buddhi? May or may not. Just to do any action you think or you don't think, actions can be generated. But karma yoga, you need buddhi. In fact, that's the very, that's why it is, it is developing you. As a person, it grows you. And Sankhya Yoga here, he has said it in the context of Gyan Yoga. Not Sankhya Darshan. So far clear, I think, averagely all of us in Thought Flow from the first chapter itself, Why he is addressing samsara first. Final solution to samsara nivritti is only jnana. But as we all know very clearly, jnana yoga qualified not yet fully. We need to work on it. To work on it, what is our tool that we have, karmas we are already doing, we are helplessly going to do. Nothing can prevent us because desires we have, we will be engaged in activity. Therefore, start, he says, telling Arjuna, this samsara halat of yours is because you have forgotten your momentarily your moh has taken over and clouded you. Achadit kardi usne aapki buddhi ko. Konsi buddhi ko? Kartavya buddhi ko. Us kartavya buddhi ka dusra naam de diya. Karm yog. Buddhi yog. Aur wo kartavya buddhi is easy to follow when it gets associated with Ishwara because moh will be for limited things. It can limit your application. Connecting it to Ishwara makes it steady throughout. Ishwar badlega nahi. So offering it because ultimately that is what is going to be the direction of yeah. Okay. So Dipiji, then buddhi yoga is leading to karma yoga. Buddhi yoga is, is karma yoga. Same. Because you need the buddhi to be able to convert karma into karma yoga. Exactly. Correct. Right. And yes, if you are feeling a little lost, don't worry. It will just get, keep getting connected and it will catch up. Will be. More me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I still have to do the whole chapter too. No, don't worry. That's okay. We'll just keep getting connected. And we have covered too many verses also. <laughs> I'll try and cover that on the um, weekdays as yeah, much as possible. Not to uh, Once things, just, just keep listening, whatever you can, things will fall into place. Of course, that's yeah. the idealistic thing. But if we yeah. keep waiting for the ideal to happen, we lose. What has to come also yeah, gets lost. Exactly. As long as there's an interest to learn, that should be enough. So we'll let's end the class. No more questions. Oh.
ओम सर्वेशाम स्वस्तर भवत सॉरी आप करेंगे हाँ जी मैं कर लेता हूँ ये सर्वे शाम तो मुझे वैसे भी याद है ओम सर्वे शाम स्वस्तिर्भवतु सर्वे शाम शांतिर्भवतु सर्वे शाम पूर्णम भवतु सर्वे शाम मंगलम भवतु सर्वे भवंतु सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश पश्यु मा कशि दुख भाग भवे ओम स्वस्ति प्रजाभ्या परिपालता न्यायन मार्गेन महि महिषा गो ब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्तु नि लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवंतु ये बहुत छोटा है पृथ्वी सालिनी देशो यम क्षोभ रहता ब्राह्मण सत निर्भया ओम ओम शांति शांति शांति